Having believable enemy AI in your game is one of the most difficult things to pull off, and one of the reasons is that it's too predictable and your players find it too easy to outsmart them. GOP, or goal-oriented action planning, is one of those techniques that can really take it to the next level, but it's complex and can be hard to understand. Today we're going to talk about what GOP is for a few minutes and then spend the rest of the video building a GOP system from the ground up. By the end of the video, I hope you'll be able to take what we build today and run with it, or you'll feel like you're in a place where you could jump into a third-party tool with ease. Let's get started. GOP was developed by Jeff Orkin at MIT in the early 2000s, and it was a significant leap in AI planning techniques. I'll put a link to his original paper in the description. Now, unlike traditional methods, GOP was designed with the flexibility and complexity of real-world decision-making in mind. Its successful implementation in the game Fear set a new standard for NPC behavior, and it showed an advanced level of autonomy and intelligence. GOP shares a lot of similarities with a finite state machine, but it diverges significantly in its approach. In GOP, actions and goals are not rigidly tied together. Instead, they're decoupled, allowing for an adaptive and dynamic planning process. This means that instead of following a predetermined set of actions, GOP allows agents to analyze their environment, consider various actions at their disposal, and devise a plan that best achieves their goals given the current situation. The GOP system enables it to explore different strategies, such as finding food, trading with others, or stealing, each with its own set of preconditions, effects, and associated costs. This flexibility allows for multiple, often unexpected, solutions to emerge, depending on the agent's current state and the environment. Each action within the GOP framework is defined by its preconditions, what must be true for it to be executed, and its effects, the outcome of executing the action. The plan system then stitches these actions together, much like connecting dominoes, forming a coherent plan that transitions the agent from its current state to the desired goal state. The brilliance of GOP lies in its planning component, which operates in a goal-driven manner, working backwards from the desired goal to the current state. This reverse engineering of plans ensures that every step taken is a step towards achieving the goal, with the planner evaluating multiple paths and choosing the most efficient one. Implementing GOP in a game AI doesn't just elevate the realism and unpredictability of NPC behaviors, it also significantly reduces the overhead in extending and enhancing AI capabilities. Adding new actions, goals, and beliefs becomes very easy. This allows you to continually evolve and deepen the game's AI complexity with minimal effort. Let's have a quick think about the overall architecture before we start diving into an implementation. The GOP agent is going to be the glue that joins all these things together, but we're going to start by defining the collections of beliefs, actions, and goals that it's going to work with. We're also going to create a few sensors so the GOP will know a little bit about its environment. And once we have the beliefs, actions, and goals collected in the agent that define the way we want them, we can feed them into the planner, which will use an algorithm to stitch all these things together, and it's going to output a plan for us. The plan is actually going to be a stack of actions and we'll pop an action off the top of the stack as we work our way towards the goal. The most difficult part of GOP is wrapping your head around how this all comes together to make a planning agent that can reason about the world and come up with goals. And often the best way to understand is to do. So let's get started. The agent's beliefs are foundational to everything else, so let's start there. I'm going to give all of the beliefs, actions, and goals their own name. And this is mostly for debugging, but if we were to build an editor tool as well later, that'd be very useful. All of the beliefs in this system can evaluate as true or false. So I'm going to default the evaluation here to false, and we can replace that as necessary. A lot of agent beliefs are about a place in the game, like where did I last see the player, or where can I get food? The default value of Vector3.0 could just mean this thing doesn't really have a location in the game. It's just a belief that I have. Let's also expose this as a public property. This way, anytime we want to find out the location of this belief, we'll reevaluate the delegate. I'm going to create a builder for this. So I'm going to add a private constructor that only accepts the name. Then I'll just add one more method here so that we can evaluate the condition and find out whether we believe something is true or not. For now, this is all we really need to encapsulate the agent's beliefs into one object. Let's scroll down a bit and implement this builder. Let's have a reference to the belief that we're building. 
Then in the constructor, we'll accept the name for the belief and create a new one. Next, let's add a method so that we can add a condition to this belief. And let's add another method so that we can also add an optional location. Then we just need to build and we're all done. Now we're going to have quite a few beliefs for our agent. So I'm going to make this even easier on myself by creating a belief factory. The factory is just going to have some information and methods that will help me create a dictionary full of beliefs with some nice, short, easy methods that I can call. So the factory will need references to our agent and to our belief dictionary. We can take those in through the constructor. So our first factory method can just be to create the most basic of all beliefs, and that is just a true or false belief that doesn't care about location at all. For this video, I'm going to keep it simple and key the dictionary with the same name as the agent belief. Let's make some room and add one more factory method so that we can create beliefs with locations easily. I'm going to add a helper method here that will calculate whether or not I'm in range of something because I want these location beliefs to tell me enough information so that I can reason about the location. Do I need to move towards it? Am I close enough to attack it? Things like that. So now we can create a method where we just accept the key, the distance to the location and the location itself. This will allow us to build a logical predicate for our condition to say whether or not we actually are in range of this thing. And then we can also set the location with the builder method. Now it might be useful also to pass in a transform instead of vector three. So let's make an overload. Okay, so nothing magical there. We're just going to call the other method. There's one more kind of belief I want to make, and that's a belief about sensors. And we're going to work on the sensor class in just a moment. And that'll detect things as we're playing the game, things that are happening around us, like did the player come near me? Or did that health pack finally spawn? So every sensor will have some kind of collider. I think I'm going to go with sphere colliders for the most part. And you can have multiple sensors on an agent. I'm just going to make them all children of the agent. So let's add a few serialized fields here. One is going to be how wide is this actual sensor going to be? And we're going to set that on the collider. I'm going to want to keep track of things within the sensor radius as well, and not just when they cross the collider boundary. So I'm going to create a timer that will reevaluate what's within the bounds of the sensor, but it doesn't have to fire every frame. Let's add a field to keep a reference to this collider. And also an event. If we've targeted something with our sensor and it moves around, we can fire the event. To accommodate that, let's have a reference for whatever it is that we've targeted that came within sensor range. And let's also keep track of its last known position so that we can compare that if it starts moving. So now we can expose some information that our belief system can use. Let's make some public properties here. One is going to be the actual position of our target or vector three zero if there is no target. And we can also have a Boolean that will tell us whether or not we're in range of this thing. The only way we'll know the position is if that thing has actually crossed the boundaries of our sphere collider. Let's give ourselves a little hand with some gizmos, I think. If the target's in range, we'll turn it red. Otherwise, green, no target. Let's create an awake method so that we can get everything initialized here. Starting with a reference to our sphere collider. Let's also make sure that we've got it set as a trigger. We'll do that programmatically here. And then we'll also make sure that the radius is correct. Next, let's set up a reference for our countdown timer. And we'll do all the configuration for this in start. We can instantiate a new timer using the time interval that we defined above. When the countdown timer runs out, we're going to want to check to see if something has changed. So let's make a method for that real quick. It could be that our target has actually left the sensor. So let's have a optional default value of null. So let's scroll down a bit here. What we want to do is set our target field to be the value of this parameter that got passed in. Then we can say if the target is in range and either the last known position is not the target position or the last known position is not vector three zero, then we can update the last known position to be the value of the target position property. So now we can fire the event because we know that either the target is new or it's moved. If we come back up to the start method now, our countdown timer has an event on timer stop. So when the timer has run out, we can actually call this method and we can pass in target with the extension method or null. Or null is an extension method that we built quite a few months ago in the video about extension methods. So I'm going to have a link to that. And there'll be links to other helpers like this countdown timer and so on in the description of this video. The or null extension method is just verifying that an object is actually null and not just a unity null, which is occasionally a false positive. So when the timer stopped, we actually want to start it again. So it runs again every one second or however often. And we actually need to start it for the very first time as well. And the way this timer works is we have to pass in delta time every frame. Last thing to do is we need to set up some trigger colliders for this particular sensor. Right now, I only care about the player. So if it's anything other than the player, just bail out. 
Otherwise, we'll call the update target position with no value. It can use the default and that'll set the target to null. On trigger enter, very similar, but this time instead we'll actually pass in the player that we collided with. That's it, the sensor class is complete. Now we can go make a belief about it. So if we jump back over to the beliefs class, we can replace this to do here with a sensor belief factory method. This will capitalize on those two public properties that we exposed on the sensor. So our condition can be a delegate that evaluates that first property is the target in range. The other one, of course, will evaluate its location. Okay, well that didn't take too long and now we have a really good way of representing everything that we know and believe about the game world. Let's move on to the things we can do in the game world, which is agent actions. Just like beliefs, I'm gonna give all actions their own string name. Actions will also have a cost that we can set. How expensive is it to actually perform this action? Then, as we talked about earlier, all actions have preconditions that have to be met in order to be able to actually perform this action. And when we're done performing the action, there will be effects that take place. So these are things that we need to believe are true before we start and things that we believe will be true when we finish. We're going to use the strategy programming pattern in order to decouple what's actually happening from the action. That means we can pump in whatever strategy we want to execute into an action, no problem. We won't make any concrete strategies yet, but let's define the interface quickly. So we need to know, can we start executing the strategy? Is the strategy finished running? And then we need three methods, one to run every time we start executing a strategy, one, when we're updating frame by frame, so we can pass in delta time in case the strategy needs it. And we'll run one more method when we're stopping the strategy. Not all strategies are gonna need these methods, but they're gonna get executed by the action anyway. So I'm just gonna put some default implementations right here in the interface, mark them all as no op. So now we can start making use of these strategies. First thing I wanna do is I wanna expose a public property here so that we can tell the rest of the system whether or not this is actually finished running. We'll know that the action is done when the strategy is complete. Then let's add in a few methods so that we can call the strategy start. So when we call the action to start, that'll actually start the strategy running. Same with stop. Then for update, we need a little bit more special handling and I'm just gonna write it right in between these two methods. Update will accept time.delta time. If we can actually perform the strategy, then let's call its update method passing in that delta time. Then at this point, we can also check to see if is the strategy actually complete or not. And if it's not complete, let's just get out at this point, we're finished. Just let it keep running. If the strategy is finished running, however, we want to reevaluate all of the effects that we think are going to happen when we are finished, whatever this action was, right? So did we actually change the state of the world or not? So this will reevaluate all those beliefs that are stored in the effects hash set. We need to construct this agent action somehow. So I'm going to create a private constructor and a builder just like I did for the beliefs, but I'm going to go through it just a little bit faster. First, let's get a reference so we can store this action in. Then we need a public constructor that'll take in the name. We'll put a default cost of one, and then I'm just gonna add a method for every single one of the properties we might wanna set for this. Then we build and return our action, and that's really it. An action just wraps up a strategy and it has preconditions and effects afterwards. Time for the last pillar, which is goals. What do we want to achieve? Just like the other classes, we're going to give it a name. Unlike actions, this one does not have a cost. It has a priority level. How important is this goal compared to other goals? In addition to that, we have a hash set of beliefs that are the things that we would like to come true if we can reach this goal. Now, that's really all there is to a goal. It's just a, basically a list of outcomes. What do I want the world to be like when I'm finished doing all these things I'm going to do? So just like the others, we'll have a private constructor here and then I'll introduce a builder. And it's really that simple. There's, an, I mean, there's nothing more to say about that. So we're done building the three basic building blocks that we need to build a GOAP system. So now we can start working on the agent and then the planning system. Then. The agent is where we're going to pull all of these different things together and make them one cohesive system. This will let us expose some properties to the editor, let us connect everything up and do all of our setup. First of all, I'm going to have two sensors on this particular agent. One is a wider one to determine when something's in a range that we could actually chase it. And the other one will be when we're close enough to actually attack something. Then I have some static things in the world I want the agent to always know about. Where it can go to rest, where it can go to eat, some doorways it should try and go through. 
The doorways are there mostly so I can just test some longer action plans. We're also going to need references to all the components on this particular agent. The animation controller class is a custom class. I've got to running all my animations. I don't want to spend any time on it, but I did want to show one thing that's in there quickly at, that's at the very bottom. If you ever needed to know the duration of a particular animation clip that's being referenced by your animator, you can search through the runtime animator controller. Um, all the animation clips find the one that matches your hash and you can get the clip length out of there. But this video is not really about animation, so let's move on. I'm going to add a very naive implementation of some statistics for this agent so that it has some health and some stamina. These will degrade over time and force the agent to reevaluate his goals. I'm going to set up a timer for these as well because I'm probably going to eventually move these stats into a proper, you know, a proper class to handle them. Beyond this, the agent's going to need a few other fields to keep track of things. Uh, one would be its target. It might also have a destination because it's going to be a navmesh agent. Now onto its beliefs, actions, and goals. I always want to keep track of the last goal that it uh, tried to achieve, just to try to make sure that it's not trying to achieve the same goal all the time. Like if, if it only has low priority goals, I don't want it wandering all the time. It should be wandering or idling or going on a patrol or things like that. So we'll also want to keep track of the current goal. I'm going to make some of these variables public because I want to show them in an editor while we're testing things out. So we need the current goal. We're going to have an action plan. That's basically going to be a stack of actions that we're just going to pop off one at a time as we complete the plan. As we're popping things off the stack, we'll put them into the current action so it's clear to us in the editor what the agent is trying to do. Then we need storage for our dictionary of beliefs, a hash set for our actions, and a hash set for our goals. Okay, let's set up some methods. In awake, we can get references to all of the components that are going to be on this agent. I'm going to set freeze rotations on this rigid body as well. Then I'm going to use the start method to kind of orchestrate all the setup. And I got four things I want to set up. The first one is timers. And the timers right now is just used to degrade those stats. But we also need to set up the beliefs. We need to set up the actions. And we also need to set up our goals. And we can do those all one by one. The beliefs have to come first because the other two depend on them. But uh, we can set them all up in their own methods. I'm also going to use on enable and on disable to handle registering to events on the sensors. The chase sensor is the sensor that has the bigger radius. So I'm going to subscribe to that one. And if something changes within that particular sensor, that's a good time to either reevaluate what I'm currently doing or reevaluate the entire plan. So let's make a method for this that will force the planner to reassess everything. Just, and all we have to do there is say, I'm not doing anything anymore. Current action is null and current goal is null. With no action and no goal, the planner is going to kick into effect and try to find something for this agent to do. So I think we're at the point where we can set up these timers, beliefs, actions, and goals, and then we'll have enough to work with to actually implement a planning algorithm. I really only need one timer right now, so let's create a setup timers method and all it's going to do is change those stats for me over time so that we can start uh, having some different beliefs about the condition of the agent. So this is just like the other timer, except I'm going to have it go every two seconds. It'll update the stats by some amount. Now the catch is I only want the agent to receive healing or stamina when it's in range of a certain location. And I've set up two little locations that it needs to travel to in order to make this happen. And that'll lead to a more interesting action plan. So when it's in range of one of these locations, it gets a positive benefit. And if it's not in range, it's going to start degrading. So stamina and health will work the same, but at different amounts. And I'm going to clamp those values between 0 and 100 for both of them. That's it for the timers. I'm just going to put a note here for myself to, you know, come back and move this off into its own module. Let's set up a few beliefs here. So first of all, we need to initialize our dictionary. Then we need to get ourselves a new belief factory so we can start creating beliefs. The first belief that I'm going to create might surprise some of you, and that belief is nothing. So it always evaluates as false. So something that always evaluates as false, suppose that's a goal that you have, then you will always be able to achieve that goal because it's nothing. You could also conversely have a something belief that is always true, but I haven't found a use for that yet. I want the agent to be able to reason about whether it's idling or moving around, and we can do that just by evaluating properties on the NavMesh agent. Okay, that's enough beliefs for us to get started. Let's set up a few actions. So I'll create a new method here. And the first thing I want to do is initialize the actions hash set. 
And then I'm just going to create two actions that we can do for now. One is going to be just to relax. So relax will be an action that uses a strategy called idle strategy that we're going to make in one moment. And the effect or the outcome of this is nothing. Absolutely nothing in the world is going to change if we just stand around. Now, on the other hand, we can make an action that'll get us to wander around. And the wander action will believe that we are actually moving, which if you look up above there in our beliefs, means that the nav agent actually has a path. So let's also define some goals. What is it that we're trying to achieve right now? Well, first of all, let's initialize the hash set for the goals. But then let's set up one goal would be to actually do nothing. And so th that could just be to, we'll call it chill out. Chill out has a low priority of one and the desired effect of achieving this goal is nothing. Let's have one more goal that will be to wander around. This can also be a low priority goal. And the desired outcome of achieving this goal is that our agent is moving and we believe that's true. Remember that this belief is true if the NavMesh agent has a path. Okay, well, we have two strategies to implement. So let's go have a look at that. I'm just going to collapse up this interface since we don't really need to look at it anymore. And just below that, let's implement an idle strategy. Now, this is going to be super simple. We can say that can perform is always true because we can always just stand around. Nothing's going to stop us from doing that. And we'll set complete when we're done running a timer of whatever the time was that we passed in. Now, I believe I set five seconds for this. We'll pass in the duration. We'll set up the timer. When the timer starts, we'll make sure that complete is false, but when it stops, we'll set it to be true, and that'll be the end of this. Now we can use some of those no-op interface methods to A, start the timer, and B, on every update, we can pass our timer delta time, which it needs to keep running. But in this case, we don't need to stop it because the timer's going to handle the stop condition for us. So that's it. This is a small, simple idle strategy. Let's make a nearly as simple wander strategy. Basically, the wander strategy is going to need to know about the nav agent and control it a little bit. We can confine it to some little radius to wander around. Now, we can perform this as long as we haven't actually completed our wandering. And we'll know we're completed the wandering when our remaining distance is small and we don't have some path pending. Let's pass in the stuff we need through the constructor. Then in our start method, we need to actually choose a path. And sometimes you can't find a path. Maybe there's a little bit of obstacles or whatever. What we can do is have a loop. We'll check five times to try to find a hit on the nav mesh within this radius. And if we can find one, that's going to become our destination. The vector three with extension method is in the library that I mentioned earlier. Okay, now we have beliefs, actions, goals, and strategies for all of our actions. It's time to build the last thing we need, which is our GOPE planner. So just before we start writing the planner, we actually need somewhere to store our plan. So let's make a construct for that. The action plan will need to know what goal it is we're trying to solve, and it's going to have a stack of actions we can take to actually reach that goal. We're going to have a total cost of executing this plan, which will be the sum of all the costs of the actions. And we can just pass all those things in through the constructor. Now let's create an interface for our planner. It's actually going to only have one method, but it's a great place to introduce a seam in your code so that if you wanted to have a mock planner for testing, you could just inject a mock instead of the actual planner. So this one method we can just call plan and it's going to return one of these action plans. And to calculate a plan, we need to know about the agent, all of its goals and what its most recent goal was. So let's set up our concrete implementation here. The first thing I want to do is take the goals that we passed in and order them in priority from the most important to the least. I also don't want to include goals where all of the effects of the goal are already complete. There's no point in making a plan for a goal that's already been achieved. So let's use links where method to filter those ones out. Next, we'll use order by descending to figure out which ones are top priority. Now here I'm going to use a ternary operator on the most recent goal. And this is just so I don't continually try to grab the same goal all the time. If it was a goal that we recently tried to achieve, we'll just give it a slightly smaller priority than all the other goals of the same priority level. So we'll just convert that to a list and now we can cycle through them and try to find solutions. So our planner is going to use depth first search in this video. 
And to do that, we're going to have to have some little constructs so we can create a graph of nodes. So let's create a new class here, node. Every node needs to know about its parent. It needs to know what action it actually represents. It needs to know all of its beliefs at this position in the graph. And it needs to know all of its child leaves. And it needs to have a cost, a running cost of how expensive it is at this point. We can have a helper uh, property here that will tell us whether or not this leaf is dead, which means it has no children and it doesn't even have an action. This will be useful later on. And then we can just take all this information in through the constructor. Notice that I'm creating a brand new hash set out of the effects that I pass in. That's because as we progress down every single branch in the graph, we will have satisfied the conditions of some of the beliefs, but we'll find new beliefs that we need to satisfy. Let's come back up to our loop and see how this is gonna work. So the very first node that we create is going to be the final state, our goal state. You could work from the start and work forward and see if you can actually achieve a goal. But I think it's better to start with a goal in mind, knowing that you're working from the top priority and work backwards to see if you can even achieve it. So our first node has no parent and no action yet, but we know what its desired effects are. That's the outcomes we want for reaching the goal. So now that we have the very tip of our graph, we can start a depth first recursive search. And we're gonna do the recursion in a method called find path. We'll pass in the goal node and all of our available actions. We'll come back here and finish this little block of logic after we've done our recursive method here. So the recursive method is gonna return true if it actually was able to find a complete path. If it manages to run through every possible branch and doesn't find a path, of course, we're gonna come back with a false. So let's loop over every action that we've passed in. Let's have a new variable that we can mutate that has all the prerequisites of the parent. We'll start by removing any of those beliefs that actually evaluate as true, because that means there's no action that we have to take to actually have them succeed. They're already done. We can use the remove where method to get rid of all of those ones that evaluate as true. Now, if that required effects is now empty, then there is actually nothing to do at this point in the graph. That means every single prerequisite all the way up the chain has been fulfilled and we can return true because we have a working plan. So now let's check to see if this particular action has any effects that actually match up with the required effects. If it does, then this is a candidate we should explore, but first, we can remove all of the effects that would be satisfied and we can add all of the preconditions of this action. So we'll have a brand new set of requirements. I hope that makes sense. Maybe it's easier just to read the code. We've got the list of requirements. We remove all the action effects and we add all the action preconditions. Next, I'm just gonna remove the action that we're using in this node from our available actions because I don't really wanna use it more than once in a particular plan. Although depending on how complicated your plans get, you may need that. So you could just leave this part out, but only if you wanna use an action more than once. So now we've decided we're gonna use this action. Let's make a node for it. So the node needs to know about its parent, this action, the new required effects, and we're going to start totaling up the cost as we keep going down into the recursion. So now we'll make another recursive call using this new node and our new available actions. So if that recursive call evaluates to true, it means we've found a solution and we're coming out with a positive answer. And so we can start adding each node into the leaves of the parent. We can also clear out all the preconditions of that node because we know they were satisfied. So at this point, if there is nothing left in that new required effects variable, it means that we have found a solution for every possible precondition in this list. It means that we have a plan that we can attempt. Let's return true. If we actually finish looping through all the actions and we're unable to find any branches where we can satisfy all the preconditions, then we can't meet this goal. There's no point in attempting it. Let's try a different one. We can return false here and get out of the recursion, That'll kick us back up to the other method where we can choose a different goal in the, in the sequence of ordered goals. So let's come back up to where I left that work in progress note, right where we entered the recursion from the first point. We can say that if we came back and the goal node is dead, that means that everything was already a success for this goal and there's nothing to do. So just pick a different one. Otherwise, let's start making our action stack out of the nodes. Essentially, we're going to just walk from the goal node all the way down to the last leaf. I'm going to add a little bit of code here that will just sort them by cost, just in case this search becomes more comprehensive. 
than just the deep first search that we have going on right now. We might want to figure out which one is actually the cheapest and use that. Let's step into that first leaf and then we can push its action into the stack. When we reach the end of the graph, we're done and we can just return a new action plan, pass in our goal, the action stack, and the cost. Just one more thing to think about. If we iterate over every single goal that we have, but we didn't find any plans, let's debug out a warning here and we can return null. Wow, that was a lot of code. And guess what? We're almost finished. Let's jump back to the agent where we can now use this planner to actually make a plan and then we can test this thing out. So let's get a reference to the interface here and in awake, we can just create a new one. In the source code, I'll have a factory that you can inject that will provide this. But for now, just for this video, let's just keep it simple. Now we need to add an update method here in this mono behavior to handle the loop. Might as well do it down here at the bottom where there's lots of room. So first of all, there's a couple things that I added before that need to tick off during the update. And that is, first of all, I have a timer to update, but I also want to continually update the speed in my animation system so that the uh, movement animations are playing correctly. Okay, now we can say if we don't have a current action going on, let's calculate a plan. We can separate that logic out into another method here. So I'll just scroll down a bit and we can do that and come back up here for figuring out what to do with the plan after we've calculated it. So in calculate plan, first I want to know the priority level. If I have a current goal going on, I want to know what that priority is. Otherwise we'll say zero. And that's because I don't want to supersede my current goal with some lower priority goal. For example, I don't want to switch to wander if I'm currently working on attacking the player. So let's put all of our goals into a new hash set. But we can say if the current goal is not null, then let's revise that actually and change it to be all of the goals where the priority level is actually higher than this one. Now that we have a list of goals to check, we can actually call the planner execute the plan method and pass in all the things that we need. When we get the potential plan back, as long as it wasn't null, we can set our action plan to be that new plan. Okay, now back up to the update loop. Let's finish this off. We've calculated the plan. So we can say, as long as the plan is not null and it still has actions to perform, let's reset our nav mesh agent. We'll set our current goal to whatever the goal is in the plan. We'll set our current action to be the, the action that's at the top of the stack and then we'll start that action. Let's put a little bit of debugging in here for good measure. Okay, so now we've got an action started, but what do we have to do to handle a, an action that's in progress or one that's gonna stop? Let's do that next here. So here we can say, if the action plan is not null and the current action is not null, let's make sure that we pass in time.delta time to that current actions update method. Now at this point, if it's complete, we can run the stop method on the current action. And we can also say, if there are no more actions in the stack, then we've actually completed the plan. So we can set the last goal to be the current goal. We can set the current goal to be null. And you know what? We might as well set the current action to be null as well, because we're finished. Time to look for a new plan. Okay, are you ready to see what all that hard work got for us? Let's quickly have a look at this inspector. I've already dragged in all my references and I've set the health and stamina to be 100. And you can see below that, I've got some custom editor stuff going on. And this is just going to show us what our beliefs are, the current plan and so on and so forth. In the scene view, you see I've got a few locations set up. Right now, we only set up two goals, which is idle and wander. So we're not going to be using any of that quite yet, but we are going to get to that. Underneath my cactus agent in the hierarchy, you can see I have two sensors. One is a chase sensor and the other is the attack sensor. I'm just going to turn gizmos on quickly here. The chase sensor is the big wide one. So I've set that at 10 right now. And the attack one is much smaller. I've just set it at two. So that's the little sphere around the middle. Okay, well, given that we only have two goals to test out right now, let's try it out. I'm just going to pause for one second and quickly zoom in. Let's have a look at the bottom of the inspector here. You can see his current goal was selected as chill out and his current action was relaxed. That was the only thing in the stack. So the stack is now empty and he has two beliefs. You can see that the idle one is true and the moving one is false, which is correct. Let's let him finish relaxing and see what else he gets up to. Remember that we have logic in place that won't let him select the same goal twice. Okay, there he goes. He picked the next one. He wandered a little bit and then went right back to chill out and he'll just repeat that. He'll go wander somewhere else and relax for a while. 
Now, we don't have any goals in place to deal with his decreasing health and stamina, and we don't have anything that's going to make him want to be aggressive towards the player or anything else. So why don't we add a few more beliefs and a few more actions and a couple new goals, and then we'll see if he'll behave in a little bit more of a sophisticated manner. I noticed that we were popping actions out of the stack before we're actually showing the debug log. So let's just move these around a little bit so they're accurate in the, in the console. There we go. Now let's go over to the beliefs section and add a few more. I want to be able to try a plan that has two actions in it, but I already know all the beliefs I want to have for the demo. So let's put them all in here quickly and just see how it's all going to work and come together. So one belief that we could have is that our health is low. So if health is below 30, then that's true. But if we think that the agent is healthy, maybe that's over greater or equal to 50. Do something similar for stamina here. Stamina is less than 10. We should do something about it. Or we could say we're rested if it's greater or equal to 50. Now, some location beliefs. Are we at the first door? Are we at the second door? Are we at, let's see, the resting position? That's the oasis in the game. Or are we at the food shack? So we can just check, are we in range of these things? Lastly, let's add some ones about the player. Is the player within the chase sensor range? Is he within the attack range? And are we actually attacking the player? Now, by the same token, we could just use the nothing belief, but this is a little bit more verbose. And we always want to be able to attack the player, so we are never going to set this condition to be true. Let's move on to some actions to support this. So in order to be able to stay healthy, we need to be able to eat something. And to do that, we have to move over to the food shack. So we're going to need a new strategy that's a little bit like wander, but it's going to move with intention to a specific place. And if we complete that move strategy, we're going to believe that we're at the food shack. Another action is if we're at the food shack as a precondition, then we can we'll, we'll want to eat. But for now, we can just idle there for five seconds and then we will believe that we are healthy. Now, it's my plan to start using the command pattern to feed into this particular strategy. So the strategy will execute the command. But for now, this is good enough for the demo. Before we make the move strategy, let's define the goal. So the goal is to be healthy. So let's come down here and right under the last goal here, we'll add one more. And this goal is to keep the health up. And the desired effect is that the agent is healthy, which matches with our eating outcome. But we're going to set this to a priority of two. So this is more important than wandering around or idling. Okay, let's set up a move strategy. The move strategy, very, very similar to the wander strategy. We need to know about the nav mesh agent but we need to know where we're going. So the can perform and the complete properties are exactly the same as the wander strategy. We'll set everything up with the constructor, but here in start, we're just going to set our destination. And when we stop, we'll just reset the path. That's it. Very simple one. Okay, back here in Unity, there's nothing to do, except I'm going to turn the health down a little bit just so he, we don't have to wait around for his health to tick down. Here we go. He doesn't need to eat yet, so he's just chilling out. There he goes. He's hungry now, so he's heading right over to the food shack. We can see in the inspector that he's got one action left in the queue, and there it comes. He popped it, and now he's eating. So he's going to hang out here for a few seconds, and then he'll go back to doing whatever he was doing. So he's back in the chill out, and yeah, now he's going to wander. So he goes a little ways and relaxes again. Okay, so we have a two-step plan. No problem. Let's take a quick look at this log too, because we can see that there was an attempt to try and find a new plan as he was changing actions. Because we don't have any goals that are more important to him than eating, he didn't even try to find another plan. He just kept going with his existing plan and popped the next action, which was to eat. And that's it. So this thing is working great, but let's keep testing it with something a little bit more advanced. Okay, so next I want to add something that will take at least three steps to do. So first of all, let's have some actions that'll let him move to the two different doors. So moving to door one is an action, and so is moving to door two. Let's also add two options for moving from door one to the rest area and door two to the rest area, the rest area being the palm trees. Notice that I'm giving the bigger door, door two, a cost of two. So that's the more expensive action to take. The agent will always choose, or he should always choose option one because it's cheaper. We need one more action, and that's for when the agent finally gets to the resting position, he can actually rest. And instead of doing a command here, once again, we'll just idle for five seconds and then let him keep going. 
let's add a couple more actions to deal with the player. One is going to be if the player comes into chase range, let's start chasing him. We've already got a move strategy. So when we have a belief that he's in the chase range, we know where he is. The outcome of chasing the player should be that he's now in attack range. And so we need one more action and that is to actually attack him. I haven't made an attack strategy yet. We'll get to that in just a moment. The outcome of that, of course, is that he's attacking the player, which we've already decided will never become true. Let's set up two more goals for the agent. The first goal should be that the agent always wants to stay rested up. So keep stamina up will be the goal. This will have the same priority as keeping health up. And the outcome will be that the agent is rested. The other one we'll call seek and destroy will have an even higher priority. Number three, which will be that the agent is attacking the player. So... Whenever the agent has the opportunity, that should be the goal that it pursues. Let's quickly make an attack strategy. For now, I'm not actually going to do any attacking, but I do want to play the attack animation. Can perform will always be true. The agent should always be able to attack and will set complete when the animation is finished. To do that, I'm going to start a timer. Then let's keep a reference to the animation controller. We can pass that in through the constructor. Then we can set that, but also in the constructor, let's configure the countdown timer. So I have a method, as I pointed out earlier, in the animation controller that gets the animation length, and that's going to be the length of this timer. Then in the start method, we start the timer, we tell the animation to begin, and on update, let's pass in delta time so we can keep that timer running. Just before we go back to testing, there's one thing I forgot, and that's to order the actions by cost in our find path method. So I'm just going to use the order by method and we'll pass that into our for each instead of just the actions ordered as they were defined, really. That's it. Okay, so we've got two tests to perform this time. One is that he will choose the smaller door and execute a three-step plan. So first of all, he's going to eat here because he's already hungry. I'm just going to get out of his way. The second test I want to do is I want to make sure that he's actually going to interrupt to a priority two goal to chase me around. So there we go. He's heading for, what does it say? Moving to door one. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So he gets to the door and now he's going to go rest. So at this point, I might as well think about going to bother him. He's probably going to go for food after this. Yeah, there he goes. So he's looking for something to eat. Let's go interrupt his meal. Okay, there I'm in range, so he starts chasing. He wants to attack. He hasn't popped it off the stack yet. Let's let him get close. There he goes, takes a swing at me. It looked like he took one more swing at me, so we might just have to add one more precondition to the attacking to make sure that the attack sensor uh, notes that it has the player as a target. What we could do maybe about that is just verify all the preconditions of an action before we actually start it. Why don't we add one more line of code to do that and we'll test it one more time and then we'll be done. Otherwise, this is looking great. Copilot kind of had the right idea, but not quite there. Let's see. Okay, it looks good on the else condition. We'll just reset everything if the preconditions are not met. We better test drive this one more time though. Okay, so I'll just press play and let me go and engage him right away. So the idea here is I want him just to go back into chase mode as soon as I run away, not try to attack me again. So yeah, there he goes, chasing. Okay, I'm happy with that. I just want to do one more thing quickly before we go, and that is I have some comments I'm going to add into the code, and I just want to talk about them briefly and about potential improvements or extensions to all of this. I think the biggest improvement that would make this so easy to use is to build a node-based editor for all the strategies, beliefs, actions, and goals. If you have a third-party tool like Node Canvas, it wouldn't be too hard to integrate with that. Next, and I'm just going to do it right now, is I would go over to the GOP agent and I would add dependency injection or use a service locator here. And that way, it would be super easy to start testing each of these things in isolation. I'm going to put the factory into the repository as well, but let's just have a quick look at it. It's registering the factory both with the service locator and using injection, so you could just use whichever one. And the last suggestion I have for right now is if you were to jump over to the find path method, we're using a DFS, but there's nothing stopping you from using something a little more sophisticated like A star or even D star to figure out the path that you want to use. Of course, there's assets on the store that'll handle that too if you don't want to do it yourself. 
I'm also going to put this custom inspector in the repository as well. One last thing is there's two pretty good tools on the asset store that are worth checking out. Escope is a paid solution that I've had for a long time and I really like, but there's another one that's worth checking out as well that's totally free and open source. And so have a look if either of those interest you. My hope with this video is that you'll either be comfortable enough to start using one of those two tools and customizing it yourself, or you'll be able to take the solution we built here today and make it your own. Well, this is the longest video I've ever put on the channel, so we'll see how it's, uh, we'll see how it's received. If you made it all the way to the end, I salute you. And with that, I'm going to head for bed, as soon as I've scheduled the video, that is. If you're not tired of watching my channel, I'll have some boxes up on the screen for you, and I'll see you there.